Hi, it's Larry Laracy. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to take a little more advanced look at Topaz Studio 2. Uh, in the last video, we did kind of an overview of what it's capable of. This time, we're going to go in and look at fine-tuning things, how to take something that gives us a lot of control already and get even more control. We'll look at masks, presets, other things that will just speed things up for you and give you just a touch more control over the way you're pushing the image. By the way, if you'd like to follow along with me, you can download a free trial. There's a link in the description to tell you how to do that. And at the end of the video, I'll even give you a coupon code you can use if you decide you want to buy it, and you get 15% off. So that's an even better deal. It's going to be really interesting, so without any further ado, let's go. Alright, so here we are in Photoshop, and we're going to jump into Studio 2, but before we do, Something I mentioned in a previous video, but in case you didn't see it, this is definitely a trick that will help things go smoother for you, not only with Topaz, but with any other plugins and filters you do. And that is to work on a separate layer. So the first thing we're going to do is bring this down and make a copy of it. And we want to work on this top layer so that if we decide we don't like it later or want to uh, reduce the opacity or things like that, we've got it on a separate layer and we still have our basic image sitting down underneath. So make sure you make a copy, grab this top layer, make sure that's selected, and then we're going to come up and jump into Studio 2. Again, we will get this tutorial that pops up. You can turn that off right here if you don't want to see it. So in the last video, we learned about filters, adding filters and stacking them up and kind of creating a whole bunch of effects together to create our own look. Today we're going to kind of look at some things that go a little bit deeper into ways that you can control this. And let me show you what I'm talking about. First thing we want to take a look at is let's go into say basic adjustments. And we notice that we've got all our basic adjustments sitting over here to the side. But what they've got kind of tucked away down here at the bottom is the presets. And a lot of times the presets are a really nice way to give you a kind of nudge in the right direction and get you started because one of the downsides, in my opinion, to some of the Topaz products is they almost have too many options and it gets a little overwhelming and you just don't know where to start. So the presets are often a really nice way that you can go through here and kind of look at these different thumbnails and get an idea for what it is you're looking for and let's say you really like the warmer morning. Click on it, give a preview here, kind of warm things up a little bit. Let's go ahead and hit apply and start with that. So that way you're not just starting at zero. The preset kind of pushes you in one direction and then you look here and decide if you want to adjust that exposure up or down the clarity. You can see here what it's already done by the blue line and then it kind of allows you to go in and make your own adjustments. Maybe we want to pump up the saturation a tiny bit still. You could warm it a little bit right here. Things like that. One other little tip that will help is sometimes you will come across something and you will say, you know, clarity. What does clarity do? Well, one of the cool things you can do is just grab a hold of this thing and slide it all the way to the side until you get the extreme effect. And you can see it's bringing out this texture a lot of it kind of in highlight type areas, but it gives it almost an over sharpened type look. You can do the opposite, take it all the way to the end, and you see we start, it starts looking like a painting or something. So that kind of gives you an idea of what it's doing. Maybe it's not explained to you technically what it's doing, but all you really care about is the look that it's giving you. And so a lot of times I will just take it and start moving it, and I'll say, do I like that better? I do like that better. Move it here. And when it gets to the point that you don't like it better, you bring it back to where it was. And that's just kind of a way you can kind of through trial and error go through and decide what's going to work for you. Because that's one of the things. You can look at this image and say, wow, I really like how Larry got that. I'm going to do, do those exact same settings. And of course, they're going to look completely different on your particular image. Once we have them as we like them, one option that you do have is if you say, okay, this is kind of the basic tweak that I'm going to use whenever I use basic adjustments. I think this is what's going to work for me. You can hit this little disc here, which is kind of, you don't really even notice it's there, but when you click on it, it brings up a chance to name this. And so I'm going to call this my basic adjustment. Now when I come under presets, there's my basic adjustment. So if I know that's something that gets me in the ballpark 
every time, I can jump right to it. So that's a big time saver. And like I said, a lot of times you may start with that and then start tweaking things based on the particular image that you're working with. But that gives you a wonderful starting point. Let's look at another thing here. Let's go through and look at precision detail. Now, let's say we go through, again, let's check our presets, and we'll just do a balanced detail. Whew, okay, we can see what that does. It gives us super texture through here and through here, probably a little too much. I would even say maybe we bring this opacity down a little bit. Okay, so now one of the dilemmas that we would have in this image is I love the texture I'm getting right here. I think this looks really nice. I'm not as crazy about this texture that I'm getting out here on the water or down in here. And honestly, I'm not really crazy about it down here in the foreground. I feel like it's kind of drawing my eye. So I would like to have that detail going on here, but I don't want it in the other places. So a really cool way around this is to put a mask on it. You can come right up here, select this little button, and it will add a mask. And then basically you're looking right here at this mask and you can decide if you want to do, you know, some sort of a, a spot, a brush. I typically will do a brush. We can do our radius and our softness. I think a soft brush usually works pretty well. I keep that edge aware on. And then we can come through here and basically the parts that we don't want as much of that detail. Let's try and just take it off of all of this can come through said and if you look over here it kind of shows you what you're what you've highlighted so far I'm gonna come up here and try and work on that a little bit I'm okay with the sky so I'm gonna leave it on the sky touch more and if we look at the mask here we can see it's basically that piece of water back there I'm still missing a little spot here that fills it in and most of this foreground. We'll be able to check that by coming up here to this little eyeball and turning off the precision detail layer. And if when I do this, if you'll notice, we can see a difference here where that detail filter is kicking in up here, but down here you won't see as big of a change. And watch we go like this. Still getting a little down here because we didn't completely mask it all out, but that's okay. I don't mind a little bit more detail. I just didn't want the super amount of detail I had up here. So by using these masks, it really is a powerful way to go ahead and adjust those things. Now, one other thing that you can do, of course, is if you decide just, man, even with the mask, this is a little too much I've done up here. I've gone a little crazy. You can come over to this opacity and just bring it down a little bit until you get it how you like it. Now we've been able to put the effect here to a lessened degree and we're not messing with these areas here that we don't want to mess with. So masks, another great tip. Okay, so one final thing you can do is play around with the blending modes when you are working with, with filters like this. For example, in the precision detail, you could go in and try looking at this in different blending modes and it, it will change the look. Sometimes for the better, sometimes it's going to go crazy. But I'm going to show you a specific trick you can do using blending modes that uh, often will give you some nice extra impact on an image. And what we're going to do is add filter. We are going to add a blur of all things. And we're just going to do a little bit of a blur. I'm just going to slide it up. I've got it set to Gaussian. We're just going to blur it out a little bit like this. So we can still basically see what it is, but it's, it's soft. Then I'm going to change this blending mode here to soft light. And you can see it gives it this wonderful glow. And here is where you can even play with the amount of blur too. And as you add more blur, the effect kind of goes away a little bit. So if you want to add more of a blur, uh, you can kind of tone down the effect. But it gives it this really nice glow. And then what we might do is once you get it like this, then we start playing with pulling that opacity back a little bit to there and then let's look at, look at the before and after. So there's before and there's the after. It just gives it a little bit of a warm glow. Kind of a cool look and uh, if that's something you like again you can save it as a preset call it uh, soft glow or something like that and then next time we go into the blur it'll be uh, 
be a preset right there. So that's basically a few ways you can streamline your process. You know, using those masks to only put the effect where you want it, and using blending modes to affect how the layers or even the effect interact with each other. And then those presets are a great way to get you in the ballpark and get you started and let you go from there to fine tune the image. And really a combination of those combined with all the different filters in this software really does give you a lot of different options to, you know, take an image from this to this. And the great thing is once you get a look that you really like, you love this combination of filters and how you've got them all set up, you can just save the look right here, call it uh, Awesome Beach. And there you go. And then next time you want to give an image all of these effects, you can just go right to your add look and it will be sitting there as Awesome Beach and you can do it again. You may not like this exact look, but this will get you in the ballpark on your next image and then you can make adjustments from there to fine tune it. So I hope that helps. Kind of gives you a few ways to tweak the software and use it a little more quickly and efficiently. If you haven't already done so, I hope you'll take a second to subscribe to the channel. We're going to be doing a whole series on some of these Topaz Studio products and uh, I don't want you to miss any of them, so hope you'll come back and check those out. If you try the trial, decide you like it, you can use the coupon code LARRYPHOTO, and that'll actually give you 15% off, which makes a good deal into an even better deal. But if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments, and I will try and address them in future videos. But until next time, I will see you later. Take care. Bye-bye.